All right, so last year I reviewed every episode of the Chucky series whenever it came out, first season one, because I love the Chucky franchise. It's one of my absolute favorites. And uh, had to, of course, keep going with Chucky season two, which I have been anticipating all year long. I really was excited for this one. Um, I just could not wait. And I finally got to watch season two, episode one, titled Halloween 2, which I think is a good one, or a good title. I like that. Um, but I swore, I thought the first season had one called Halloween, but I think I'm thinking of the Scream TV series, because I watched that this last year as well. Um, it, it probably had that in the, in the, uh, in the, in that series where it said Halloween was one episode and Halloween 2 was another episode, but, uh, but regardless, um, this one is called Halloween 2, this episode, um, starts out with a great opening of Andy from the last season, where at the end of the first season, Andy is taking all the Chucky dolls that are in the in the van that are going to go to the, all the hospitals around the world that have all the Chucky souls inhabited in it, in them. And, uh, of course, you, you realize that Tiffany, the doll, is there. So this starts up with that, where it goes back to just what happened at the end of the last season, where now you see what happens afterward, where Andy is on the road with Tiffany with him at gunpoint. And I really like the fact that this starts out with a shot that reminded me of Bride of Chucky, where all the Chuckies are talking in the background. Um, and then you see the mirror shot of the eyes of Andy looking backwards. Um, and Tiffany's got him at gunpoint, which is very similar to how Jesse from Bride of Chucky was whenever he was talking to Tiffany. I thought that was pretty funny. Just that similarity and i and i like that they do that in this in these films and the show where they do a lot of uh homages to the other ones but i love that opening because you also get the multiple chuckies which i think are really fun that were introduced in cult of chucky but then we're at the end of season one of chucky where they all have different kind of personalities varying personalities of chucky so some of them are pretty dumb or some of them are really smart or some of them are kind of indifferent and I think that that's funny that Brad Dorf has to have that many different personalities for each of these Chucky dolls. And I like seeing the uh, the dolls in the van, how one of them is bald, and the, the other ones are making fun of him for it. Um, and they're all just treating each other badly, all of these Chucky dolls. I think that's hilarious. Um, I thought that worked really well. Um, you get this interesting thing where this these are complete spoilers for this episode, by the way. Chucky, uh, I mean, Tiffany and Andy are having a squabble, and then Andy literally starts swerving the van around, drives this van off a gulch where, the, where all the Chuckies are in, and I think it was like 60 or 70 Chuckies. They even said the number in the show, but I'm already forgetting what the number was. I think it was like 68 or 76 or something like that. Um, that's a lot of Chucky dolls. And Andy drives it off the road onto into a gulch, um, the New Jersey Gulch, and Andy dies, and I know that he's not dead. Just like I know Kyle's not dead in the last season, they're going to come back. Um, they even make a point in this episode to say that that Chucky tells Jake later, like, Andy and Kyle are dead, and he's like, I don't believe you. Like, I like that. I think that that's, even though it's kind of obvious that you know that they're not dead, um, there's going to be a way to get him out of it. I dug that, um, and besides that opening, it starts six months later, where Jake and Devin are kind of estranged because they're not seeing each other, um, because they were, became a couple by the end of the last, uh, last season, um, Lexi is now doing drugs, and I think that that's interesting because of this character, and Lexi is the most, um, fleshed out of the main kids in terms of cha character change. Because with Jake, it's just about the repercussions of admitting he's gay. And with Devin, it's the same. But with Lexi, she's a spoiled, she starts out as a spoiled brat and a jerk. And then she becomes kind of a better person, mostly, towards the end of season one. But then by season two, six months later, she's now doing drugs. And I think that that's an interesting character development. Because this character is really going downhill. And I, I like that. Because I know that she'll get out of it and she'll find a way to get out of the drug habit. But I like seeing that. I thought that was cool. Um, 
what really I thought was interesting about this episode, though, was you also get Caroline, who is Lexi's younger daughter, or, I mean, younger sister, the daughter of the mom who's the mayor, and, of course, the husband died in the last one in the movie theater, in the last episode of season one, the very last episode. Um, so now there's the repercussions of the mom being pushed out of office because of all this happening, and the fact that Caroline said in the last episode that Chucky told mommy to kill or Chucky told me to kill mommy. She said that out loud in front of all the public. So now the mom is having trouble getting over that. But and I like that and I liked how Caroline is this little girl who like Andy when he was young or like Alice from Curse of Chucky or even Tyler from Child's Play 3, she is this little kid who had already figured out what Chucky is, but now she's alive and she's got to defend herself. And I like that Lexi is telling her, like, here's a knife, you got to defend yourself if he comes back. I think that that's interesting that they make, she makes like a six-year-old, seven-year-old do this. Lexi, her sister, makes, makes her sister wield a knife just for safety um, in case Chucky comes back. I thought that was great. But the thing that really surprised me in this and we haven't seen this since Bride of Chucky, is the fact that you get the uh, the doll back that's the Tiffany doll before Tiffany does all the makeup. Um, and they call her a Belle doll in this. I don't think they had a name in Bride of Chucky. They just, Tiffany just gives, just shows Chucky the doll and there's not really a name or a name on the box or anything in that movie. But you get that doll back, like pre-Tiffany makeup. I think that's cool to see that doll again and it's creepy looking. Um... And it's given by this psychiatrist who is taking care of mostly all the people who survived the last ep the last series, uh, the last season, where you've got Lexi and her family talking to the therapist, and then you've got Jake and Lexi and Devin talking to the therapist, and the therapist gives the doll, the Bell doll, to Caroline, because Caroline is so traumatized by dolls that the the uh, therapist thinks it's good to give her a doll just to kind of get over that fear. But I know for a fact that that doll, here's my, here's my idea. I think that the doll is just, I don't think it's Tiffany because Tiffany doll gets shot and head blown up at the beginning of this episode, which was great effect by the way. Um, but I don't think it's that. I think it might just be a Chucky, like we're inhabiting a Tiffany doll. That's what I think it is because it showed a point of view of Chucky as a wearing a ghost outfit to Caroline at the beginning of this episode. So I think that was the Tiffany doll um, or the Belle doll. So I think that'll be interesting to see if Chucky is talking out of the voice of this girl doll. I think that's funny. Um, I was surprised and I liked how this was executed where Chucky just comes back to the house and... Um, and he gets Devin and Jake and Devin's new adopted foster brother, Gary, who's like this five-year-old kid, um, and Caroline together. And he ha Chucky has a bomb that's literally going to go off if whenever Lexi comes down the stairs because he wants to kill all three of them after they thwarted his plan in the last season. And I think that's really good tension in that scene. And even the jokes Chucky makes doesn't really dissuade from the tension either, which I like. Because Chucky does a good job with all the movies and shows just tonally changing. And I really dig that. I like the fact that that was a really tense scene with Chucky with a bomb. And then um, I like that they get away from it by Lexi doing drugs and not going down the stairs. And she kind of sees it but then runs away. And then Devin, Devin tases Chucky where he flies. And then Devin grabs the bomb like in another room. Because Chucky says this bomb will have a six foot radius of like, if it blows up, it'll kill everybody around him. So Devin, I mean not Devin, so uh, Gary grabs the bomb, the little kid. And he's way farther away from everybody else. Chucky appears and then he sets off the bomb. And Chucky uh, commits suicide too, in which there's multiple Chucky. So of course this Chucky doesn't matter, he's gone, but there's another dozen that are still out there. But I thought that, that was crazy and I like that the... The characters even say this in the show that Chucky is now ballsy enough to kill off one of his doll forms or one of his dolls that he is inhabiting because he's got multiple dolls that he can inhabit. I think that that's cool. 
Um, and the fact that Chucky killed a five-year-old kid. I'm assuming he's five. I don't know. But he looked like he was like five or six. Um, that was great. Um, because I was just it's just surprising whenever movies do that. Horror movies do that. Or shows. Where you kill off a kid. Like, that's just kind of an unsaid rule. I know that it happens. Assault in Precinct 13. Blah, blah, blah. But, like, it's it's great to see that. Like, just in terms of the shock value. Because it's just surprising. Um... And then the last thing in the show uh, is that they get sent to this Catholic correctional facility because everybody thinks that now they killed Gary, like um, Jake and Lexi and Devin. Everybody thinks that they murdered this little kid, which of course Chucky did, but of course nobody's going to believe them again. And they're getting sent to this Catholic cor correctional facility, which is, um, one, the fact that you've got a gay couple, You've got a girl doing drugs. You've got them um, being framed for murder. And this Catholic school is going to eat them up. They're going to get de decimated um, in terms of how crazy and crass the school will be with religion. And I just what they're going to do with that. I think it'll be great. And that's how the episode ends. So I'm glad that it, it ended on a note where you get to you get a good surprise now. Or not, not a good surprise. You get good anticipation for the next one. Because I really am excited to see where they're going to go with this with this Catholic school. Um, I'm excited. I really love this show. So, like, season one, I loved. This was a great episode, too. I can't wait to see what unfolds. Because I can't wait to see Glenn and Glenda again uh, in human form. That'll be awesome. Um, seeing Jennifer Tilly again is great. Seeing Kyle, or seeing uh, Nika again would be awesome. And I know she's in it because you've seen her in the trailer. Um, and of course, Andy and Kyle, who are obviously not dead, but I, I don't care. I'm excited to see them too. I can't wait. Um, that is it. Um, pretty much all I can say about episode one of season two, Halloween two, which again, love that title. Um, so that's it. I've got, I will definitely review the rest of the episodes on this channel whenever they, every week. So that is it for today. See you guys later. Take care.